Welcome to ITDesk.tv. As a professional in the field of data management, I understand the critical importance of maintaining a well-organized and secure database. Now, a database serves as the foundation for all of an organization's information. It houses everything from customer records to financial data. Without properly function, without a properly functioning database, business risk losing valuable information, compromising security, and hindering their ability to make informed decisions. Now, in my role, I am responsible for designing, implementing, and maintaining databases that meet specific needs for my clients. And this involves carefully planning the structure um, of the database, determining the appropriate data types and relationships and ensuring that the data is optimized for performance. I also work to establish robust security measures to protect sensitive information from unauthorized access. Now regular maintenance and monitoring are essential to keeping a database running smoothly and, and you must conduct routine checks to identify and address any issues that may arise such as data corruption, um, performance bottlenecks, and things of that nature. Additionally, I, I stay informed about the latest developments in database technology to ensure that my clients are benefiting from the most advanced and efficient solutions that are available. Ultimately, a well-maintained database is essential for enabling organizations to operate efficiently making informed decisions and staying competitive. In today's fast-paced business environment, by leveraging my expertise in database management, I'll help my clients and I'm going to help you right now to fulfill your potential of your data and drive success in your operations. Stay tuned. Now to explore this concept in detail, we're gonna be using Microsoft Access and we're gonna be creating a database about students, students and their classes, their student records and things of that nature. And we're just gonna build it as we go to sort of get you a feel for it, okay? So we have a brand new database set up here in Microsoft Access, there's nothing in it. We're just gonna open the table in Design View and we're gonna call this first table, table name, student. Let's say the ID is author number R, that's fine. And we're gonna put first name. Just gonna run through some things. First name, last name, um, email, phone. I'm just gonna leave it at that. First name, last name, email, and phone. That's the student, all right? So let's get the first name. You have you have some drop downs here. You can choose what the data types are. Um, so what type of information do we want to store in here? We just leave it as short text and it can take up to 255 characters. That's fine. The email, we'll probably see if we have any email options in here that we could use. Um, we're gonna leave that as well. Short text um, and phone number. Let's see if we have number in here or phone. Okay, we're gonna leave this as text as well. All right, so that's fine for now. And we're gonna uh, close this. So that's a student table. Yep. Now the next table, before, before I do, instead of calling this ID, let's make it real simple. I don't want anyone to miss it. We're just gonna call this student ID. And I'm gonna come back to this. This ID that's given to the student, it's gonna be an auto number. And it's going to be what we call a primary key. So in this table, the thing that you identifies the student, every student has a unique identifier and that's their student ID number. No two students can have the same ID. Two students can have the same name 
um, you could potentially have the same email, you could be a brother or sister, live at the same house, have the same mom person, same guardian with the email. You could technically have the same phone number as well, but you're not going to have the same student ID. So that is a unique identifier for this student. It's like our TRNs in Jamaica. It's like your social security in the United States. It's a number that's unique to you. You're the only one who has it. So that number by itself can identify you. So that's what the student ID is. And it is the primary key in this table. Remember that term, primary key. We're gonna create a new table. Create table. And I'm just gonna to go to the table design. All right, so we have a new table. This time, this table now will be called um, class. So just like we had a student ID, we're going to have a class ID. Number. That make it auto number as well. We're going to have a class name. Okay. And that should do it. The class ID, class name. Okay. Let's um, let's close this and give it a name. I'm going to call this table class. There's no primary key defined. All right. In class, what could identify the, the class? So the class in here is going to be like math, English, and so. Let's create a class ID. Let the class ID be the primary key and we'll use that okay for now table name class now we have class and we have student all right going on so far so we have a table called class we have a table called student and there's nothing so far that puts them together the beauty about databases is that we can now have a table just using the class and the student okay we can create a brand new table called student class follow me now so let's do create table design um, we'll call this table um, A student class I'm gonna have a student class ID I'm gonna make it auto as well and inside the student class ID I'm going to take from the from the class table and also I want the primary keys from over here so in the student table, let's remember the student ID is the primary key. And in the class table, the class ID is the primary key. So in this new table with the student class, I just need the student ID. And the class ID, which is also a number. I just need these two things. I'm going to show you how it works after. So I'm going to call this table student class. I'm going to create the primary key of the student class ID. I'm just going to close it. I'm keeping it very simple. This is student. Class table. All right. What we're going to do now is we're going to populate. I'm not going to go any further because I'm going to use this to show you the basics of database. I have a class table where all I got to put in here is mathematics, English, 
show. Studies. Biology. Chemistry. And I probably should just put one more. Um, economics. I just put seven subjects in the class. I want you to follow me. You notice the IDs incremented each time from one to two. I didn't have to type anything. That's the auto number feature in this simple Microsoft Access that we can use. All right, so that's a class. So let's get some students now. Let's call this person. Christopher Christie. Um, Christopher at itdesk.tv. Phone number. Phone number eight seven six five five five. Let's do um Topaz Christy. Call this Topaz at IP desk dot TV. Let's get her the same phone number. His name. All right. Let's do uh, Mar Williams. Let's call him Mar at itdesk.tv. Uh, it's um, phone number is them six. Okay. So we have three students. So database tools. Now there's something in here called relationships and I want to show you something. I'm going to grab all these tables and I'm going to put them on the relationships. Okay. Now there are the tables that we have. I want you to want you to pay attention. The class table that has the class names with the math, English, social studies and so forth. The class ID is the primary key in that table. If this ID shows up in any other table, it is what we refer to as foreign key. It's primary in this table. So if it's showing up in another table, it's now a foreign key. So this class ID, I'm linking it to the class ID in the student class. Class ID links to class ID. There's a concept called referential enforcing referential integrity what does that mean it means no class no student should be taking a class that doesn't exist in the class table so let's say for example we were not doing English literature I shouldn't see English literature in the student class because there is no English literature in the class table you follow so all the subjects in here, when I say enforce referential integrity, I'm just saying one class from the class table can show up in the student class many times. The same class ID. That's fine. So Kemar can take the class. Christopher can take the same class. Um, Topaz can take the class because it's what we call a one-to-many relationship relationship many students can take a single class and I create that link here's another thing here I want you to look at cascade update related fields if I check that it means if I should change mathematics and start to let it say math m-a-t-h instead of mathematics then everyone who was using the ma the mathematics before it automatically changes when I update the parent class, which is the primary class, the um, the class in which the ID is the primary key. If I update the name in that table, it updates right across the entire database. So I can update things easily without having to go to everybody who has the class and changing it for them. You can test that out. So that's what. And I say cascade delete. Do I want to do that? For now, I'm going to do it. 
Cascade delete means if I delete math in this table, anyone who took math in the student class, their record is deleted. You may not want to do that, but I'm just showing you the feature. If for some reason I want to get rid of everything to do with mathematics, I delete the, I delete the, uh, the record in the class table and everyone who ever took it, their record gets deleted from math completely. That's what the cascade delete related records will do. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go ahead and click create, join. You notice on here it now says the one class can be shown many times and that's what the symbol is, this infinity, sim infinity symbol. One class can show up many times in the student class table. I want you to think about that as we look at the student side. How many times can a student show up in student class? Let's think about it. A student can take math, English, same student. So one student can take math, English, biology, physics, chemistry. It's the same one to many. If I grab this and link it, one link the student ID from the student table, which it was the primary, and link it to the foreign key. Student ID showing up again in the student class, and we can do the same thing. Enforce referential integrity, cascade update, and cascade delete. Same concept, one student, many classes, okay? And now it's joined. Now the beauty about databases is that as long as there's a link that ties everyone together, everyone's connected. I don't have to tie the class table directly to the student. I just connect them through the student class and so I can pull information as I need. Okay? And that is the relationship so far. All right? Okay, good. Now, let's see if we can enter some information into the student class. Okay. So the student class table, let's look at the student again. We had we got Christopher, it's one student number one, two, and three. And in class we have one, two, three, four, five with their IDs. Okay, so let's let's fill some stuff out. Let's say we only have students what? One class ID four. Student four. Look at look at what's gonna happen. Class ID five. You cannot add a record because a related record is required in student table. What did I try to do? I tried to add a student ID of four, but let's look over here. There is no student ID of four. We only have student IDs one, two, and three. So when we were adding something in the student class table, it has to be a student that already exists. So their ID is three, so I can add them now and I can keep going. Let's do three again, mm, two, student ID three, they're doing class one, student ID three, they're doing class six, student ID two is doing class one, I'm just adding student ID doing things. All right, I'm not going to add anymore. All right, so I got all that stuff right there. ITdesk.tv Unlocking Doors